called but violent like Ben Siegel. I'm anti-evil, plus I touch a desert eagle. My life's illegal, slaves and prisons are equal. The devil's lethal, he killed a hundred million people. I'm Dark Man, Iceman, La Wu Tang Clan, Trafficante, Sensei, Caprende, my Marine Corps, straight from the Trojan War. Black Cape Crusader, trap door, flame door, stuck a chain store when I was dirt poor for my reward. Next week the Germans have me on a bulletin board. And welcome to the Red Leaf Retrocast, episode 92. It's retro gaming. We're talking celebrities and athletes is the theme today, chosen by one of my other fellow hosts on another podcast that we put out here at the RLR. It's from K. He really wanted us to play some shitty games and have some fun, <laughs> and I think he accomplished that goal. What say you, oh, Joey succeeded. and Colin? <laughs> he succeeded spectacularly. Yeah. <laughs> he got he got his niche fun. game in there, and we got to choose some very wacky titles. <laughs> <laughs> I think on a normal podcast, we would have uh, not even given these a second thought. Ah, may- well, okay, maybe one of them. I'll give maybe one. You know what? Two of them. How about that? Two. We'll definitely go with two. Two out of the five. I, my thoughts exactly. <laughs> yeah. So this is episode 92. We're inching ever so closer to 100. We got our next theme picked out already. I'm very excited for that one. We haven't uh, we haven't delved into that genre in quite some time on this podcast. And how's everyone doing? It's been a couple weeks. Colin, what's up? You in the you in the moving vo- moving mode? Yes, I am. I mean, didn't mention it last cast, but I secured myself an apartment much closer to home. Or no, not home. Uh, work. Much closer to work. You know, chop my, chop my travel time by at least two thirds each way. And it's it's a nice basement apartment. It's technically a two bedroom, but it. I'm just gonna use the other bedroom as like a computer room or something. Hell yeah! Now you need to turn it into a shrine of your favorite celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll what turn closets it into are a for. A video game shrine. Excuse me, Joey. That's what closets are for. Oh, right, closets behind the curtain, the curtains of clothes, and you. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um. And this weekend, I'm in the process of selecting a storage unit for all the stuff I've got crammed in the attic here at home. Oh, so storage unit. Every... Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, I want to have everything in one place so to put into the moving van on moving day. So bit by bit, every weekend, I'm going to stop by with a couple more crates of stuff and just do that for the next few weeks or weekends. And then come moving day, everything will be ready to go. Hmm. All righty. Good stuff there. Any uh, Any video games you've been playing that aren't podcast related? Well, I'll save my Xenoblade Chronicles stuff for later. Okay. I, I do have Let's your see. special drop just for you, ready to go. So give me a little heads up on that one. Yeah. I've been playing Blossom Tales a fair amount on my Switch. Did you already play that game? Uh, I feel like no, you did. I mentioned getting it. I mentioned getting it, but I didn't get a chance to play it yet but maybe it was kevin then who who played that could be Mm -hmm. it it reminds me a lot of link to the past although yes the gameplay is a little more smooth one thing i like about it is that you can move while swinging your sword and even do a small combo that ends with a sword spin i thought that was pretty cool okay that kind of sounds like secret of mana-esque i haven't played that Oh, we need to fix that someday. I know we covered it on the podcast. I'm bad, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of those games you gotta at least boot up and see what all the fuss is about, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, one... It, I like how the story of the game is told as, like, a grandpa telling a bedtime story to his grandkids, and every so often you get to see them interject with their own dialogue, and... They'll even suggest what kind of enemies to encounter, and you have to choose between two options. That was, that was a pretty neat way of telling the story. The puzzles are a bit hit and miss. 
I mean, it. sometimes it's dead obvious what the solution is, and sometimes it's completely unintuitive. Like in, in one puzzle, in a, <clears throat> it's like a side puzzle in a cave that has you putting a sequence of symbols into pillars. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the cave to indicate what, it, what it's supposed to be. But thankfully, it's, it's only a side quest, and it's not mandatory to progress. And aside from that, just Xenoblade Chronicles. All right, I Time guess we'll... for my bi-weekly update. All right, I guess we'll get to your Xenoblade in a little bit here. How about yourself, Joey? What you been up to? Uh, you know, just playing some Apex. A new season dropped on uh, Tuesday. They season had some very nine, shit... correct? Yeah, very shitty servers oh. that were issues for a couple of days. Like it was bad that their store wasn't working after the oh, release, shit. so people couldn't even buy the new legend. And then if you could get into a game, it went to just the original. And sometimes it would show like, oh, you can select anything. You would select one, and it would just randomly pick one of the original characters. So <laughs> me and my friends somehow selected two lifelines at one point. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, I've been playing that like nonstop. Started playing some ranked in it. Really enjoying it. I think they need to do some fixes with this season because the new bow is just way overpowered. It's... It shoots as well and as hard as a sniper, but it doesn't have a sound cue. So it's like silent and really deadly. <laughs> silent so. and really deadly. Okay. <laughs> well, even at distance, because even some snipers, they have a drop off. Man, they do less distance from range, but the bow doesn't really seem to have that. Or it's a lot less than some of the snipers. So it's a better sniper than the snipers. And there's no reload because it's one arrow at a time. So you can shoot pretty fast. It's It's kind of broken. So no reload I'm sounds hoping. kind of broken. I mean, there's a like you have to get another arrow, but I mean, it's not like as long as reloading a, a gun after you shoot four times and it takes a while to reload. Gotcha. You just constantly like maybe like a second to pull an arrow back and shoot another one, so you can just constantly do that. So it's kind of broken. Huh. Well, alrighty so, then. But yeah, I've been having fun with it. Anything uh, in the personal life going on? Just got my second dose of the vaccine. Went through some side effects, but feeling good now. Yeah. Better than that, no. Okay. Just I get mine Tuesday, so I expect Wednesday to kick my ass. But that's okay. Nobody, yeah. nobody actually cares <laughs> about what other it's, people are doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth well, it. Sounds, sounds like I'm, I'm finally eligible for one. Hell yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're all vaxxed up. You can, we can get back to normalcy at least on this side of the world. Hopefully. Yeah, we'll see. It sounds like New Zealand has already completely eradicated it. Good. Good for them. Yeah, but they got to be safe with their borders to make sure that they don't bring it back in. <laughs> yeah, really. Over and over again. So I uh, have not booted up Fatal Frame 2 or Persona 3 in the last couple of weeks. Uh, that is still kind of on uh, the not feeling it quite yet again mode. Uh, I thought I would have I've been working on other other projects, personal projects, doing a lot of things for the Patreon uh, with Kay over there. We're doing a lot of good things. Sign up if you want to hear a lot of wrestling stuff. Uh, doesn't look like the video game stuff is going to uh, transfer over. Just the the time is not allow allotted with uh, all the all the projects. Uh, that's okay. Not a big deal. Uh, everyone who signed up is pretty much there for the wrestling content, so it's okay. And then. Uh, I've been I have been playing a lot of Fantasy Zone, uh, that arcade edition I got on the Switch. I've been really into that. I've been really into the time attack mode, trying to beat my own little times, trying to do like three three credit or less clears. It's a super fun uh, port type um, game that came out on the Switch. Uh, we covered that on the the previous podcast episode. Joey, you were not here on that episode. Do you have any uh, thoughts over some of those games since we're here? I don't even remember what games are on the list, so no. Okay, well, <laughs> fair enough then. But yeah, I've been playing Fantasy Zone, and I've been playing a lot of Fire Pro Wrestling World. Booted that sucker back up. I've been addicted to that. It's it's right up there with one of my favorite wrestling games of all time. It's so much fun. The amount of creativity that you can put in the game is incredible. Uh, the, the DLC that they've added uh, pretty much makes this game uh, forever playable. In the sense that you can, Joey, you can create your own moves. <laughs> you can create a host. It's like anything you can do to create a sprite, you can do in this game now. 
and and uh so if you're into just kind of the creation and um uh the amount of characters you can download from the net and uh, it's it's just there's so much replayability value there uh that I kind of wish the I know on the PC people have added a lot of kind of mods where you can kind of throw in uh, different match types and whatnot, but uh, just use your, it's it's almost like you're kind of going back to the past with use your little creativity brain, just kind of set something up uh, kind of off game and put it and just kind of take your mind into uh, the game realm. If you know what I'm kind of getting at there. So it's like uh, I can create my own special type Royal Rumble situation where it's like six people enter uh, they have an elimination match, and then uh, another six, and it's kind of like a bracket Royal Rumble situation. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. Get what you're saying? Yeah. So that's I've been I've been fucking around with that, just having a good time. Uh, have an anime on in the background. Uh, finish just knocking some shows out uh, from the various seasons. That's what I've been up to. Uh, I've been reading reading a couple books uh, as well. Get my reading on. So. Uh, reading a wrestling book right now it's about women's wrestling it's not good <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not good uh it's it's it, it feels it's not actually about women's wrestling it's like a series of it's called we love wrestling or some shit um we love women's wrestling whatever the title's called it was like four dollars on amazon i was like oh, okay this sounds interesting yeah it's a series of essays from a bunch of people that would rather talk about the i know what it's going for but it, i feel like it false advertised what it was supposed to be uh, yeah it's just a series of essays about women talking about kind of the social injustice in the world i'm like uh ah uh, jeez yeah i mean i totally get like everything's kind of well thought out and well written about kind of the goal in mind per essay, but I really wanted to <laughs> read a women's wrestling book and I didn't get it. So it's fine. It's definitely not good though. <laughs> it's definitely not a good book. <laughs> like they'd rather plug their Twitter handles and it's not good. Anyways, that's what I've been up to. Fire Pro Wrestling World, uh Fantasy Zone, awesomeness. I still love that game. And uh Games for Podcast. So, Colin, how about that Xenoblade update? As I, or are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna play the drop then. And the floor is yours. All right. So. Played a few more hours. I think I'm about seven hours in. I discovered an online guide that has all the kinds of materials that you can sell without worrying about synthesis down the line. So from that, I was able to accumulate a nice tidy sum of money. And of course, early in the game, there's a bit of a bit of an attack on Titan moment. It's a, uh, just all these mechs and robots invade your hometown. And that's that's the point at which Shulk discovers how he can use the Monado himself. Mm -hmm. the, the big high-tech sword on the cover of the game. And unfortunately, one of the childhood friends does not make it through. And uh, I was kind of pissed because I put a lot of money into into the armor and weapons there, and I didn't get them back. Bit of an bit of an heiress from Final Fantasy VII moment there, right? <laughs> but at least this was early in the game. Yeah, I felt that moment kind of didn't have a, enough uh, juice and time to really make you uh, feel what they were going for memory serves yeah but we now have shulk's motivation to go to move forward and find the find the faced mechon that that was responsible and 
He wants revenge. Yeah, I'm at a I'm at a point where there's a whole ton of side quests in one big field and not entirely sure if I should do them first and then advance the story or have the big story advancing conversation and then go for the quests as they if they're along the way to the next objective but still it's still a pretty pretty fun game i just haven't had a whole ton of time to play it as of late with all of my moving stuff but yeah i'm looking forward to see where how it plays out because i i looked online and it seems like it goes upward of 60 hours so it's gonna be pretty it's gonna be a long a long playthrough oh yeah it's a it's it's an investment a lot of these rpgs are absolutely just crazy in time i'm like waiting for the day i finally just go full bore into dragon quest 12 myself but I got Persona 3 right now. I want to beat. That's kind of my long game <laughs> currently. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I, God, I really just got to go into F Fatal Frame 2. I'm going to finally beat that game. It's, I spoke about that a couple podcasts ago, uh, if not the last one. And it was, uh, yeah, it's it's been enjoyable. Uh, what hasn't been enjoyable is my ever so longing quest to get a PS5 that uh, according to Joey, isn't sure it actually exists, and I I agree with him. <laughs> yeah, so I still haven't seen one. I I mean, I have people they say they have one, but I don't know if I believe them. Yeah, I don't believe them either. Yeah, uh, I be I believe scalpers uh, make them themselves and sell them at outrageous prices. And if you support that, uh, you might you might uh, support scum. Just uh, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen a few PS5 boxes in the blue bins I've been collecting on the job. You should uh, tell me uh, what houses they, uh, they come <laughs> and from. And what's their schedule? And do you know when they're gone? <laughs> yeah, yeah just, you need to hook a brother up. Basic. Uh, there's some pretty ritzy neighborhoods. I'm sure they've got some pretty tight security on their homes. Look, man, if the wet bandits can <laughs> can, <laughs> can rob some hoity-toity uh, Chicago homes, then I'm sure I can at least uh, flood a basement or two. Yeah, and then they can become sticky and rob a toy store in New York. I think JD has it here. He can get one PS5. Yeah, exactly. Come on. <laughs> so I am in no less than probably three kind of alert discords over when stock come actually happens. Uh, there was a big Canada stock uh, release recently. Hmm. However, uh, even though I have been on the ball, like credit card i've signed up to all these sites i all i have to do is click and quick check out okay follow me so far uh, uh -huh. yeah it is still it, it, okay so this sucker came out november october last year november whatever so december january february march april that's 6 7 months ago and we're still we're still in this phase of bots and scalpers still getting them all it is just i was going to say you need a bot up Learn some Python, script it up. You already have your credit card, everything there. Have a script to run and buy one on one of those sites. Look, man, I'm six months into Python and it sucks ass. I hate it. <laughs> it's so needless. Uh, it, it is so needlessly complicated for no good reason. I'm like, what is? Uh, Joey, you're you you are the computer of programming of software. <laughs> yes, I am. This thing is super irritating. I hate Python. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it either. It 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 like. For what I'm able to get to get for it to work, uh, it works great. But getting to that point, I'm like, this just isn't worth it. I feel like I could accomplish so much more with a simple Excel macro program because it takes. Yeah, but think of the so possible PS5. Time. Learn to script. <laughs> get the PS5. It's there. It's at the end. It's not there. Maybe. I swear it's not. There's better. There's, there's better scripters out there. They probably have faster algorithms and get things done, but better than you do. Yeah. Uh, I, I am convinced Python is just the common one, <laughs> and uh, for those that don't know, Python is kind of like a uh, a data software encryptor or something or another. It's good for data it, gathering. It's a scripting language. Yeah. So I I, I use it at work for bullshit. So. <laughs> 
it's a fancy way to say, look, I'm doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I went to college for rocks and I'm fucking computer scripting shit. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Everything comes down to computer languages. Megan's learning the R right now because she wants to get into data science. Like, I hate it so much, degree. I don't want to put it on my resume because they might make me, I might get a job and they're like, oh, you know this? You could do it some more. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. It's horrible. Yeah. So anyways. Yeah, no just PS5. Get a, just get a garbage man job like me. It's <laughs> better than you think. Under Underlining, uh, no, I, I, I kind of, I kind of like my low paying job currently. It's very, very easy going. <laughs> <laughs> I can pay all my bills, pay my rent, save some money, not have a PS5. That's kind of the priority right now is getting one. <laughs> so the funny, uh, the funny thing I read recently, uh, Colin, was Returnal. You heard of this game? Yes. Okay. It uh, it absolutely lived up to expectations. Some people are having you know crashes every now and again, so there it does have its faults just from the performance part. But the game got good reviews. It looks awesome. I've watched a few Let's Plays on just kind of how people are tackling the beginning differently. Uh, very fun stuff to, to watch people go through it. Uh, because it's a rogue-like game, uh, it just has that replayability value, and it has to. <laughs> Otherwise, the loop will just drain you immediately. It is. It seems like it's kind of difficult uh, quite a lot, but rogue games are <laughs> are all like that, essentially. Yeah, uh, but the, anyways, no, one, nobody cares. the The point is, Returnal isn't selling well <laughs> as expected, despite PS5's quote unquote selling great <laughs> over expectations. <laughs> and you just kind of put the numbers together. Hmm. If like only sixty to seventy five percent of PS5s are active, and Returnal's not selling well, maybe it's because nobody actually has a PS5. <laughs> Nah, that's crazy nah, talk. Nah, that's crazy talk. No, nobody cares about stats. Yeah. Put stats in front of it. Ah, that doesn't uh that doesn't work. That do, that see, I think it's this way. But sir, the stats say you're wrong. No, 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 I'm never wrong. Fuck fuck you and your factual numbers. Get out of here. <laughs> I might be work venting at this point. <laughs> uh, shall we talk about these fucking games? Yeah, let's talk about these fucking games. Let's talk about these fucking games. Yeah, let's see. Do I have... You know what? Haven't played... Oh, let's see. Donkey Kong. How about Donkey Kong? Everybody likes Donkey Kong. Alrighty, celebrities and athletes. That is our theme today. Games featuring celebrities or pro athletes out there that kind of have some celebrity status, I suppose. Suppose. Suppose, guys. <laughs> That's a word. Kay chose this uh, so we could get a couple of his funky little games in here. Uh, and that's kind of the fun of these themes. Uh, for those who don't know, Kay joins me on the Wrestling Podcast. He pumps out a lot of uh, content for the Patreon uh, that you can easily search Red Leaf Retrocast for. Go support us. we got a couple different tiers to ho help uh, support research and uh, uh, projects and content that we give to you. So there's a nice plug. And he also has his own podcast, Big Egg Joshi Podcast, where he pumps out uh, the free versions on a delay of our $1.50 content. And he pumps out his own uh, JWP reviews from 1990. And why am I talking about wrestling? Well, his first game on this list is Cutie Suzuki's Ringside Angel on the Sega Mega Drive, a Japan exclusive. And uh, I'm sure you guys uh, were so itching to play another wrestling game <laughs> since we just had a wrestling podcast not too long ago, a wrestling-themed podcast. Uh, Cutie Suzuki was a kind of a Famous wrestler for a promotion called JWP. See the connection there? In Japan. And she was, of course, a wrestler there. She showed up on WCW Nitro in 95. Joey, I'm sure you know what Nitro was. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, she was also a model, including some 
very raunchy magazine covers and and uh, uh, photo book albums and that kind of stuff. Um, very wholesome content, if you catch my drift. And she was a cult movie star in a movie like Battle Girl, The Living Dead in Tokyo Bay. <laughs> Sounds classy. Yes. So she uh, she was in a lot of different forms of media. So there's a little background over Cutie Suzuki. And she had her own wrestling game. Uh, very rare of the time. It was an all-women's wrestling game. Let's see. It came out in December of 1990. It is multiplayer, but only 1v1 uh, matches, no tag matches, no specialty. It was uh, quite limited, but the I think its appeal is the great sprites, the sort of responsive controls, but you don't really know what you're doing half the time. <laughs> there's yeah. no button prompts. There's no button mashing. It's just kind of press the buttons, have a good time. Big sprites. They're in leotards that look revealing for 1990. Hmm? Don't forget and, the Playboy Bunny girls. Yeah, well, okay, so Cutie Suzuki was the only licensed wrestler in this game, while all the others were based off of other uh, Japanese women's wrestlers of the time, kind of in her, uh, in the era. So some 80s, some some early 90s situations there. So you can kind of just look at the sprite and go, oh, okay, that's Don Matsumoto, that's Akira Hokuto, that, you get the idea. Joey, let's ask you first, sir. What did you think of this wrestling game? Well, very surprisingly, I didn't like it. Ah, shocker. <laughs> I mean, one, there's no English. So uh, correct. That's that's a downer. Two, the sounds are weird. They okay, do tell. Didn't... I don't know. They just felt I know it's old game, but it just didn't really seem to fit. They were. I don't know. It just felt off to me. It just didn't match up with wrestling. It just felt off for some reason can't really pinpoint it i just thought it was weird so yeah didn't really like this game colin what say you uh you know how much i love wrestling games. of course yes <laughs> that and fighting games <laughs> yeah yeah i <clears throat> i got my ass kicked naturally that's pretty much just mashing buttons and hoping for something to happen in my favor so much of the time, just got caught in a, a grappling move, and whether it's getting suplexed or one of those over-the-shoulder throws. <laughs> only, uh, only every now and again could I ever actually get in a grab move of my own. I kept trying to do one of those run across the, run across the mat, bounce off the ropes, and then do a kick, but my opponent always got the kick in first. <laughs> I did like the damage bar out. on the screen. That was a that was a that's a cool little feature. So you yeah, know how much how much. Yeah, that's uh, one thing I like. It's one thing I liked about it. I mean, the, fair, the characters' faces appear at the top, and you can see how they're faring from their expressions alone, instead of a health bar. And, and if, there are some commentators in the top right of the screen. If I could fluently read Japanese, I'd probably enjoy it. <laughs> Oh, so the the game does something interesting when you want to do uh, the kind of King of the Ring mode. We'll just call it that, since a lot of people are more familiar with that. Uh, it, 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 there's a knockout tournament, basically, that you can do. Um, and what happens is uh, you go through uh, trying to be, uh, trying to win the title at the end, or what have you. And the commentators actually change with each match. And if you noticed, I don't know if you guys played long enough, but uh, it'll switch between like a squid will join commentators. And I was looking <laughs> up some translations and the, the other commentators like, well, this is strange. <laughs> like, oh, who, brought, who brought the squid here? Uh, and then there's uh, KFC Colonel Sanders makes an appearance. They just go, we love K Kentucky Fried Chicken in, in Japan. <laughs> so that was funny. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger, a.k.a. Terminator, makes an appearance oh, no. yeah it's it's really <laughs> great so there's some there's some humor there uh there's the good there's the health bar which i mentioned the giant sprites with the expressions at the top of the screen um the game does have a hold back in the sense that when you throw someone against the ropes or you go against the ropes in order to 
kind of not stretch the screen out or have someone off screen, a blue vertical bar will come in to split the screen for a second uh, to yeah, handle the limitation yeah. of what was going on. That I mean, that's it, weird. It's very weird. It's annoying, but I understand kind of the reasoning behind why they had to do that in 1990. So anyways. I think their pain faces are weird looking. Oh, well, they're... Like if you get the bar all the way down and they're just shaking, it just, it's weird. Oh, they're chibi little uh, J- Japanese sprites. Come on. It's great. Mm, no. Oh, no, come on. It's weird. <laughs> uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's got some basic moves. As you're familiar with Japanese wrestling or women's wrestling of the era, you kind of understand the moves that they're doing. Um, I could go into a whole diatribe over why it's a limited move set. Uh, why only nine girls have the burning spirit to fight uh, for the titles, etc., uh, etc. Et but eh, that's that's for a different podcast. Uh, go check out the wrestling podcast, actually, <laughs> where we talk a lot about uh, all Japan women and whatnot. But um, for its limitations of the time, I will give it a pass. It has its charm to it, but it is very limited nonetheless. So it's it's when I okay. So when I look at it to other wrestling games in like the late 80s and let's say early 90s up until I would say the Royal, the WWF Royal Rumble game we played uh, previously on the podcast, this is probably the best one of its time, which isn't saying a whole hell of a lot, but uh, I, I guess, so I'll give it a pass from that perspective. Uh, as a game itself, it gets a fail. Hope that makes sense. Oh, I'm failing it. If you're not a wrestling fan, if you're not a wrestling well, fan from that era, it's going to be terrible. So <laughs> they, they, I fail it. Colin? Yeah, I, I got to fail it too. Okay. I just I just was not having fun with it. All right. So as I pull up the next game here, because I want to see how long this game actually is. Okay. It is Kay's second pick. It is 50 cent bulletproof. So we've gone from Japanese wrestling slash celebrity to 50 cent, the rapper. (laughs) (laughs) Developed by Genuine Games, published by Vivendi Universal, came out in November 2005. So, okay, that makes uh, that makes more sense of the quality of this game. So this actually had a PSP port the following year in August 2006. I looked up a YouTube video of the PSP port. Oh no. It is <laughs> it is all top down. It's called G Unit oh. Edition. It is oh, atrocious. Geez. But we're not here to talk about that game. We're here to talk about the PS2 version. Uh that's what I played. Anybody else play the Xbox version? I got this watch YouTube videos. P- PS2. Okay. <laughs> so, if you are curious at how much this game goes for, it is like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got the change out of my car. I went to the store and I got this sucker at the retro game store and um, proceeded then to uh, give it back a few days later. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I had. Fun with it, nonetheless. Uh, it actually won a lot of awards for its soundtrack because, obviously, it's all 50 Cent songs and G-Unit songs. Yeah, that's a strong hmm. point right there. It's very much a strong point. It, um... <laughs> if you want to hear... Anyways, uh, the plot. Here's the plot, because this is great. <laughs> you guys ready for this? 50 Cent finds himself being dragged into the criminal underworld, taking on the most dangerous criminal organizations in New York City. 50 Cent gets its former fr- former he gets a call from his former cellmate K Dog, not to be confused with the wrestler Conan. Ah, see wrestling reference. I could do it, letting him know like, that he is in trouble. 50 Cent like gets his gun. Call. He's what? like, "Sup, dog? It's me." Like I thought, K Dog called you. Why are you calling him? <laughs> 50 Cent gets his gun and leaves, gets his crew together like Lloyd Banks, <laughs> the locksmith, Young Buck, and Tony Yayo, a demolition expert. The crew goes to Queens. They see K-Dog getting physically beat down. 
Uh, and uh, so basically, 50 Cent wants revenge to fly out, find these assailants and uh, goes through a game Max Payne style. It's uh, a lot of people compared it to what was that? It was like a true crime streets of LA of the era, but it, this really played more like a max Payne without bullet time. Did you guys get that it, same sense? It was a uh, noir gangster uh, video game. Cause a lot of his voiceovers were very noir esque. <laughs> yeah. And then the fighting was very GTA esque and the camera angle sucked. Camera angles are bad. The controls were way over responsive. Uh, so you had to kind of lightly tap everything all the time, which was aggravating. And yeah, I, I think I think GTA third person view is a good way to put it. I still lean more towards Max Payne, but obviously not as it is definitely not as good as Max Payne. <laughs> it didn't really have the movement that Max Payne has. No, 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 no. So I can't give it that comparison. What do you think, Colin? I barely touched this one, to be honest. Oh, come on. You didn't go to the store for a dot and get it for a dollar? <laughs> oh, we're still in strict lockdown. I didn't think it was even worth the effort to go online and ask if the local store had it. I'm sure you could get it on eBay side. for like $3. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. But yeah, I just watched a YouTube video of it and just came across to me as a fairly generic third-person shooter. Nothing to really right home about this one big shooting gallery the environments are pretty samey and bland and i mean i kind of like that you could grab dead enemies wallets but i didn't i didn't go very far into this one like 10 or 15 minutes at most oh it was uh, the last one i <laughs> i went to for okay. this cast least amount of time all right fair enough uh I had way more fun with this than I probably should have. <laughs> you you can find Dr. Dre. He's it, he's a uh, arms dealer in this game. Uh, Eminem's a corrupt police officer, which I found really funny. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, I know what you mean about the repetitive gameplay. It's very much the samey environment, um, hiding behind stuff, rinse and repeat. Uh, it doesn't really delve away from that. They're all linear levels. That's kind of the Max Payne route as opposed to true crime or something where it's an open world. Uh, and GTA, that's also an open world. But uh, it weirdly does a lot of things I really liked, which was it's kind of more cinematic noir aspect to it all. I love how you use the word noir, Joey. I'm going to use that because that's exactly what it is. Because he did the voiceovers like it. It was like he was doing an old-timey noir movie game, even though the voice acting wasn't the greatest. But... I see what they were going for. Yeah, I see exactly what they were going for. They were going for this kind of cinematic gangster type approach. Uh, Cutscenes were all in this kind of music video esque thing that you'd see straight out of a Fifty Cent music video. Uh, it, it it has this weird charm to it, which I really liked, and that's what kind of kept me going through it all. I just wish the gameplay was a little bit more refined and a little bit less repetitive. And we could have been onto something here. <laughs> I hate to say it, but this one was hmm. weirdly fun. The, the, the I think it was way over the top, which made it funny. And I think that's that gives it a, a more charm to it all. Uh, obviously, I didn't play. I didn't beat this. It is a, it is like a ten hour game, seven to ten hour game. Uh, I found. Which I think it is a plus because I you would think Fifty Cent they would just slap his name on something, maybe like reskin a game. But this game seems to be actually made for Fifty Cent, and they actually put effort into it. Oh yeah, exactly. I was I was expecting like this glitch bullshit, you know, celebrity game uh, that you constantly see all the time for cash grabs. This was not. This was not that. They put in a genuine effort uh, to make this game, and I feel I feel like besides. The gameplay, they got exactly what they were going for for the era. So I got to give a lot of kudos there. I'm passing this game. I'm going to pass it too. Eh, soft pass, I suppose. I mean, it seems competently made. Just not very interesting. All right. Joey, your game. Oh, are you ready for this? The best game ever created, ever? Oh, oh, is it? <laughs> Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. <laughs> now, the game might have seemed innocent when it first came out, but now it's creepy as hell and it's awesome. It's Michael Jackson <laughs> going around fighting gangsters, saving little kids, little girls to be exact. In the first 
I don't know if they changed to other types of kids, but he goes around collecting kids and dance fighting. And it's just sparkle, amazing Michael Jackson music. It's the best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> Are um, you going to say otherwise? I mean, kind of. <laughs> it's so deliciously creepy now. <laughs> Wasn't this basically a, a console release? Basically, like, wasn't it really close to the Genesis uh, release time? I know the arcade I, came out prior. I have no idea. Uh, don't know. Hmm. Look at it. Uh, Sega Genesis uh, console release date. August 14th, 1989, and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker on the on the Sega Genesis came out July 1990. So it wasn't too far. It was less than a year from the console release. Yeah, developed by Sega, published by Sega, July 1990. It's a beat-em-up slash running gun. I, I guess the running gun? Uh, well, the other people get to shoot at you. I don't think you get a gun. But you get the sparkle kick. And then when yeah. you run out of power, you just punch and kick that are weak. And then you're special. The best thing about the game, if you hold down the spin long enough, everyone on the screen starts dancing till they die. Yeah, Yeah, but you lose half your health when you do that. So? You <laughs> kill people by dancing. That's all you need. You can, also, you can also throw your hat as a boomerang attack. I really like that attack. There was, there was definitely so, something going here for it, but uh, they did not refine... A lot of things that they were going for. Uh, the fact that you have to save every kid on the level was very asinine. And, and the yeah. places where they were, like the third level, one of them is in a window. I didn't know you could open windows. I had to look up where the hell the last kid was. Dude, you, I, I played this way longer than I should have. The game's only like a couple hours once you like just look up a walkthrough and you can kind of see where everything's going in the ga in the game. But uh like, there's sewers you can go down, but you can only go down using the spin attack, which is annoying because then it takes some of your health away. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you can, um, There's a car level. There's a level with a bunch of cars, and they have bombs in them, and no matter what, they basically hurt you. So look up a walkthrough to make sure you know which car actually has a kid. Uh, so that felt cheap. Uh, the graveyard level was very, very, very difficult. Uh, they yeah, just, that's where I stopped playing. Yeah, that's where that's where it got is, me. Is that done. one the the dance special? Is that the one they do a uh, thriller? So, fun fact about that: some cartridges do not have thriller in it. So it's just the generic level song that keeps playing. Yeah. So if you're the unlucky person that has a cartridge that didn't have the thriller, sixteen bit sound to it, you definitely would feel ripped off. <laughs> yeah. I felt ripped off. <laughs> yeah, that what really made me stop playing was like the the final boss battle because there's two zombies that come out from either side and they can boomerang their torsos at you. I mean, there's sometimes you can duck it, but even when you try to duck, sometimes they still hit you and they take off a lot of health. And they have a lot of health themselves and they're really hard to hit, so that boss was so cheap. I don't like when the boss shows up at the end of the level. If you touch him, you take a lot of damage. Oh, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> you're basically yeah. dead. And you have to actually get to where the boss is after you've collected all the kids. Basically, he bubbles the monkey, jumps on your shoulder, and starts pointing to where it is. It's like, very why stupid. Have the boss show up right then and there. Stupid. That's amazing. You get directions from a monkey. I mean, in theory, <laughs> it's hilarious and great, but you're just prancing around this empty level then, just trying to find where he's pointing. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. I I kind of wish that these levels were linear, kind of left to right, instead of this kind of free-roaming, uh, up-and-down, left-right version, because you can easily get lost or miss... Because you have to find every single kid and you have to open every single little thing or break walls or whatever, uh, you can easily get sidetracked and forget where you've been 
because also everything looks very similar to each other all the time. It's kind of annoying. No, nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. I suggest watching the angry video game nerd video about it. Oh, I'll have to do <laughs> that. That's pretty funny. I'll have to do that. The kick was that aggravating because there was a lot of enemies that you come across that you're because she kicks so high that he can't actually hit these things. So you have to use yeah. kind of a spin attack or something uh, to get them. And of course that drains your health. So it's, it's irritating. There's, there's a lot of things against this game that just kind of frustrate you rather than now, if you're just going to pop it in for 30 minutes and have a laugh. Oh, it acts absolutely accomplishes that. <laughs> it's a perfect meme game. I mean, you open a door, a girl comes out, and she's, like, right at dick level for Michael Jackson. Michael! <laughs> Michael! <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a meme game at this point. Absolutely. That's a good way to describe it. And that's why I'm passing it. Passing it for <laughs> meme purposes? Yeah, okay, fine. Hell yeah. I'll, 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 I, I will be with you on that one. How about that? Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a soft pass, too. It's playable, but kind of pointless. All right. Uh, my pick. All right. Yes. Forgot that it was me who picked this. It is Wu Tang Shaolin style, a game based off of the Wu Tang Clan and Mortal Kombat. I guess <laughs> it's by Paradox. Nothing to fuck with. Yeah, <laughs> developed by Paradox Entertainment, published by Activision of all companies. Uh, released November of nineteen ninety nine. Uh, in Japan, it was June 2000. This is a fighting game with videos in FMV, which was very strange. Uh, it's basically the Wu-Tang Clan and then in-game characters doing kind of this either 1v1 or f or fatal four-way <laughs> fight to the death uh, 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 3D fighting game mode. And then when you get down to two, it kind of goes into a cool little Mortal Kombat esque one v one three D fighter. It's not what I was expecting at all going in. Uh, they got fatalities. You get uh, you get uh, what they call chambers in the game, and that's kind of what the, the idea, I guess, there is to collect chambers, get your power ups, and then become the top Shaolin master or whatever. There's a heavy amount of violence to it, and I absolutely uh, had to look up the code in the instruction manual to release the uncensored version of the yeah, game. Yeah, the parental code. That's what I had to do, too. And I got my head cut off. Maybe I should have left it off. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole appeal of this game is the gratuitous violence that comes at the end of each fight where you're kicking dudes' heads off. You're using, like, whips and shit to rip heads off. Bodies explode via, like, lightning and shit. It's, or swords going through people's heads via something straight out of the movie Blade, where he kicks, he throws the, he throws the sword in the air and kind of roundhouse kicks it right into, right into a dude's face on the wall. So it's got, it's got really cool fatalities. It has a lot of cool violence uh, of the era that definitely appealed. But uh, is it a good game? I would say no. It responds like ass. The controls suck. Uh, they almost feel delayed. The frame rate like really crashes a lot. Uh, but if you're in for a kind of... If you got four friends over and you want to bust out your uh, PlayStation, then you could have fun for, you know, like an hour or whatever. So that's my opinion on it. What did you guys think? Uh, pros, cons? You know the drill. I really wanted to like it, but the yeah. controls were just such ass that I couldn't. Like everything else about the game, the story, the, how things are set up is great. But then when you actually fight, it's just terrible. I fought some chick with a blade mm -hmm. and her reach was f further than mine and she was faster. So I would kick, but then she would kick and it would cancel out mine and I would just get destroyed. It didn't make sense. Oh, yeah. It was super unfair. The entire time. Yeah. Uh Game goes for about five hours. If you can stick with it that long, it's thirty bucks uh, for a loose cart or loose cart, loose disc. Uh, what, what did you think, Colin? Yeah, much like Fifty Cent Bulletproof, didn't really touch this one very much either. I mean, 
Yeah, the the gameplay kind of gave me diehard arcade flashbacks. It's a good comp. It felt, felt more like a a three D beat 'em up than a full on fighting game. Mm hmm. And I should point out, I've never listened to any of Wu Tang Clan's music, so <gasps> I'm probably going to be pretty high, pretty behind with any vernacular about them that gets thrown around. Yes, I'm a heathen. Get you to listen to some Wu Tang Clan then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I'm a white bread heathen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of like the graphics and visuals, but the gameplay didn't look all that exciting. I mean. The guy I was watching just kept getting his ass kicked. Well, that is the game, yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I used the cheat code to unlock all the characters, and I played as old dirty bastard. Hell yeah. (laughs) I read somewhere that this game's uh, engine was sort of a prototype for Thrill Kill, if anybody's heard of that one. No, but I I have read about the thrill, Thrill Kill engine itself. I believe that was a paradox kind of kind of thing there yeah i think it's it's officially unreleased but it got leaked and now it's got kind of a cult following oh okay yeah it's sort of a it's sort of like 3d mortal Kombat with all these guys with really fucked up fucked up bodies or just they're just like either demons or zombies or stuff like that Think skull girls, but not sexy. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, I, I give this game a fail. Yeah, same. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm failing it. Yeah, it, ha- it has potential. <laughs> it has potential, but uh, it didn't nail really anything that... Outside of playing with friends and only your friends, playing a game like this, you could get drunk for like an hour and have a great time especially with all the uh, the fatalities that they have in the game. But other than that, I just don't think there's a lot here going on. Um, only frustration. Yeah. Your last, Colin. All right. Mine is Tony Hawk's Underground on PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. Developed by Neversoft and published by Activision. Released on the PS2, GameCube, Cuban Xbox and Game Boy Advance apparently in North America on October 27, 2003 and in the EU on November 21st, 2003. And I picked this one because I I played it and beat it way back in high school when renting it from Blockbuster. And both me and my brother had a lot of fun with it back then. Cuz my brother loved the Tony Hawk games and so did I. I mean, I even I even had the same save file from way back in 2004, but unfortunately, it's on it's long gone because my memory card chose to shit the bed at that point, and I had to reformat it. So all my old save files from over the years have disappeared into the ether. Oh well, shit happens. But yeah, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, this is the first Tony Hawk game to have an actual story mode. Yes, okay. that's what that's cool. that was their goal to separate it from past titles. Yeah, because other ones just had yeah. levels. Yeah, and I am not as good at this game as I used to be. It's definitely not like riding a bike. I mean, I shook some of the rust off while I was playing, but it, it's still it was still a bit of a challenge. Yeah, believe it or not, the last time we played a Tony Hawk game was in October of 2019. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Somehow that feels like uh, it was a lot more recent than that. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. for licensed soundtracks, I think. Yes. Yeah, it was like Tony Hawk 3 or something. Yep. That was the game. Yeah. I did kind of like the added feature of being able to switch between moving on your board and moving on foot. Is it, it gives you a little more wiggle room with your movement if you ever get stuck in a corner or some such thing. Uh, yeah, I, f- okay, so my thoughts on that as that, that mechanic of the game, I get what they were going for, but it felt like a cop-out, way too easy, uh, and really took down a lot of the, the, um, the fun difficulty that I had in previous Tony Hawk's games, because Tony Hawk 3, <laughs> for some reason, is still fresh in my mind, and I, uh... I'm like, okay, if I'm, if I know I'm about to beef it, 
then I just click, at least on the GameCube, uh, that's what I played on. It was only 10 bucks. Uh, the game basically goes for $10. Um, it, uh, it'll run you about, you know, 10 hours plus, you know, um, fucking around <laughs> time, time allotted. And I, I'm, I'm really 50, 50 on having that in the game. Cause then you just kind of run around. I get what they were going for. But uh, I'm le- I'm definitely leaning towards the I didn't like it because it took away from what the other games were able to use with it. If that makes even a smallest bit of sense, why I'm criticizing it the way I am. Fair enough. And there's <laughs> there's also uh, I don't know if this was in other games, but you can like grab onto the back of cars and use them to get a big speed boost. Called it sketching. Yeah, sketching. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah, they, for some missions, they ended up throwing in a few uh, on foot, like platforming sections, kind of like Tomb Raider, and and a driving section that that came kind of out of nowhere. But yeah, overall, it's still got a lot of what made makes Tony Hawk games fun. I mean, going on foot is optional. If, if that's that bothers you at all, but I uh... feel like they could have done something more unique with that mechanic. So you aren't able to just barrel out of moves as kind of a, a ditch to say, um, you can't just willy nilly just get off your board. Uh, I I feel like maybe if if you get to certain areas of this like open world stage, because I believe there was three of them in the game. It was um, it was like Hawaii, New York, yeah. and whatever whatever the the levels were again. Uh, where I think you gotta get to a certain area of the stage, and then you can activate a uh like a prompt to get off the board, and then you can kind of platform your way up to certain uh, other areas rather than just oh, I'm skating down the street, get off, go jump and collect this fucking money thingy that you gotta get all the time. Yeah, I think if there was more to do off the board it makes sense, but it just I don't know, I feel the same with you, JD. It just I didn't I didn't like it. And I definitely didn't like driving the car. I thought that was stupid. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know why we're driving cars in a skateboarding game. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, let's Although see. by the by the end point of the story mode, you can you end up because you're going through like ritzier and ritzier areas as your character gets more gets more of a following, and then he goes all the way back to his hometown, and you can you kind of feel just how how much you've progressed, how far you've come, and then I kind of like that about it. But overall, I still like it. I I give this game a pass. Did you guys do the uh, private eye uh, quest or whatever the hell they're calling this game? I Did you get that can't bar? Remember, where you have to help him catch a cheater by grinding on the car while they're having sex. Oh yeah, I think I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you grind, she would moan. It was so weird. <laughs> that uh, that sounds exactly what us as teenagers, Joey, would love to do in 2003. <laughs> yeah, probably. Giggle, just... giggle like, like teenagers. <laughs> yeah, look at what's happening here. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, the guy wanted you to do that. I think go to a, a club for some reason and then take his dry cleaning. It was just weird. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Like, I, I understand what they're going for, and I really appreciate it when games are trying something new and to separate it, ex- especially since we've, you know, at that point we had, you know, a lot of these just standard Tony Hawk games, and adding a story mode in inherently is a good thing. I really liked uh, doing something different and new. I, I think the... <laughs> it just does a lot of things that you just question, what are we doing here? And, you know, the driving one... Uh, is definitely uh, prime target number one for me. Uh, kind of getting off the board and collecting shit all the time for 
just what I thought was a weak story overall. Maybe they could have, if they were going to go full story mode, maybe they should have come up with a better uh, kind of premise and idea behind what we're doing on each stage. It just, I don't know, it came across as a needless collect em up too much at times, and I really didn't like that. Uh, I, I think maybe if I was at this point in time, or at least in 2000. Three, if I was still way into these skateboarding games, then yeah, I, I, I feel like I would have a lot more nostalgia with this than what I do, but I just don't. So I just, I'm not into what they were bringing uh, or how they executed what they were bringing. Uh, I think the sequel I remember playing a lot more of, and they did a much better job with that one. I can't speak on that too much because I just don't really have the memory with it. But for Underground, I, I see there's a good game here. It was easily the best playable game we played on the podcast, like for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of that going on. So I think I just looked at the game with a with a much different kind of mindset than the others because I expected all of the others to be bad while this was kind of like the, the fucking fifth or sixth Tony Hawk game out there. They, they knew what they were doing at this point with Activision. And I'm not sure Neversoft... Were they involved in the other Tony Hawk games? I can't Not remember. Not off the top of my head. Let's see here. Neversoft. What did they do? Uh, yeah, they were. Um, yeah, yeah, they Tony were. Hawk they were the other Tony Hawk games. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 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 Man, they pretty much made a Tony Hawk game every every year. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Nineteen ninety nine to two thousand four annual. Fuck. And then. Uh, Project 8. But Tony Hawk's American Wasteland? What? I've never heard of this game. I've heard of it. I haven't really looked into it, though. Oh, they're the same people I made the Guitar Hero games. I see what's going on here. Wait, no. <laughs> Guitar Hero 3. Never mind. <laughs> Alright. Getting off track. Uh, I will pass Tony Hawk. It's well playable. It's a good game. It's just not for me. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know if I'm going to pass it. I think it missed what it was trying to do. Ooh, you got some I don't balls think, to like, say that, Joey. Like, the skating part is good because it's Tony Hawk, but I think the story fell short. I think having kind of open world, was it fell flat on its face. It wasn't exactly what it should have been. Uh, I think I'm going to fail it. It's got customization. You could do that. Yeah, but I just, I just don't think it lived up to what the other games were, so I'm going to... Which is unfair. I mean, it's a playable game, but to me, I'm just going to fail it. Ooh. What about the soundtrack? Is that good enough to pass? Does that change your mind? <laughs> it doesn't change my mind. I just, I just think, I don't know. I just didn't like the story enough to make it. It just, I don't know. I'm just going to fail it. All right. You convinced me. I fail it too. I wanna, I'm going to go with you, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I did that. <laughs> Colin? I already passed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So our five games were Cutie Suzuki's Ringside Angel on the Genesis, 50 Cent Bulletproof on the PS2 and Xbox, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, oh, grab that dick, Genesis, Wu-Tang, <laughs> Wu-Tang Shaolin style on the PlayStation, totally not Fatality, and Tony Hawk's Underground uh, on the, uh, the trio of the early 2000s. Colin, favorite, least favorite, and your grades, if you will. Well, favorite is obviously Tony Hawk. Uh huh. Yeah. And least favorite, probably Wu Tang. And for mm-hmm. tears, uh, Cutie Suzuki. Even though I failed it, I give it a low C. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, Fifty Cent, a D. Michael Jackson, C. Wu Tang. D and Tony Hawk B. All right. How about yourself, Joey? Um, let's see, worst. I'm gonna go Poly Wu Tang. It it beats out Ringside just barely for the worst. Okay. At least Ringside was somewhat playable. Wu Tang was not. Um, and favorite, uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. <laughs> question mark <laughs> <laughs> no, these are a great game so it's gonna go michael jackson 
Uh, ringside is going to get a D. 50 Cent gets a C. Michael Jackson gets a B because mm. dance moves. Wu Tang gets a D. And Tony Hawk will give a C. So I think we're all kind of uh, feeling the same thing, but different ideas of what we're going for here. My favorite was 50 Cent Bulletproof because <laughs> it was the most absurd of them all. And I think they nailed what they were going for, which was kind of the only game that did that. <laughs> uh, least favorite, I'm going Wu-Tang as well. Uh, Cutie Suzuki, I'm giving that a, a, a D as well, despite um, kind of its low praise I had for it. 50 Cent, I'm going C. Even though I, it's it's gameplay. Come on, guys. Michael Jackson also going C. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'll stick with C. Why? Whatever. Uh, Wu Tang. I guess we all have the same D rating there. And then uh, Tony Hawk. I'm also going C with Joey. So uh, not a lot of high praise going on this one. So that gives uh, Suzuki a D. Uh, that gives that a C. That a C. That a D. And that is C. So, <laughs> and C or D's all around for this podcast episode. Oh boy. Well, that was at least fun. It was fun to make fun of them. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 And uh, our next theme has been chosen by Joey. What is our next theme for the next episode here? Racing. Going back to standard racing. We haven't done racing since like episode two or whatever. Yeah, really. Yeah. And I wasn't here for it, so it doesn't count. Yep. So Racing Games, number dose, coming in uh, episode 93 here. All righty. Well, that'll end this podcast episode. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye now.